Good evening. My name is Wallace Gator Bradley, and I'm the host of the Bradley Report. This show was put together by none other than my wife, whose name is Terry Marsh Bradley. She's also the chairman of United Peace, Inc., and this show is being presented by United Peace, Inc. Me, I just happen to be the president of United Peace, Inc. There's two issues that's very important. And from last week, we talked about the murder of the Chicago police officer uh, that was carjacked from what we're seeing in the media so far. And they got a suspect. His picture's been shown everywhere. And the mayor had on the schedule that he was going to go and pay his respect to the family as well as his respect or his condolences for the slayed, the murdered police officer. But the mother of the officer that was murdered made the decision that she didn't want the mayor to show up at the funeral. Not just the mayor, she didn't even want the governor to show up at the funeral. So the mayor and the governor adhered, which was the right thing to do, to the wishes of the grieving mother. I want to say with so much violence that's happening, I, I don't think and then I don't know. If they felt like the governor and the mayor was responsible for the murder of her son because of the crime that's running rampant in the city of Chicago. I don't see how any elected official could be blamed for the crime that's happening in the city of Chicago unless they're committing the crime. But like I said last week, I understand where she's coming from because I too is a member of a family that was grieving when our brother got murdered. So without further ado, Monty, could you play that piece for me? Among those expressing condolences to the uh, fallen officer's family today, but the mayor did not attend the funeral after learning that the officer's grief-stricken mother said he was not welcome. ABC7 political reporter Craig Wall joins us now with more on that. Craig. Judy, this decision by the family causing a bit of a political stir. Last night, the mayor in his public schedule said he would be attending the funeral, despite being told earlier in the evening by two public officials, including Illinois Comptroller Susanna Mendoza, that the family did not want him there. This morning, the mayor relented and decided he would stay away. Retired police officers and others say they can't remember a time when the family of a Chicago police officer told the Chicago mayor he or she was not welcome at the funeral. It's a powerful message. Uh, they're basically saying that they do not want the most powerful, most prominent, most important member of the city, uh, the mayor of the city of Chicago, to participate in this very important event. It says that, you know, the appetite right now of, of the political movement against the police is noticed by citizens, noticed by family members. The mayor's change of heart and schedule coming only about an hour before the funeral of Officer Luis Huesco was set to begin. It shows tone deafness and it also shows a lack of respect. The mayor, without addressing the controversy, said in a statement, as mayor, I vow to continue supporting our police and first responders, uniting our city and remaining committed to working with everyone towards building a better, stronger, safer Chicago. My heart is with the Huesco family today. 
The last time anything close to this happened was in 2021, when officers turned their back on Mayor Lori Lightfoot when she went to visit the family of wounded officer Carlos Yanez at the hospital, despite being asked to stay away. Today, there were a number of other elected officials who attended Officer Huesca's funeral. The police superintendent choosing to focus instead on his fallen officer, not the controversy. I'm not going to get into politics or anything surrounding this funeral. I am not going to take away from the real focus here. And the real focus is that of Officer Luis Huesca and his family. Now, last week, the officer's family had also informed the governor's team that they did not want him to attend the funeral. The governor saying today that a lot of times families do not want the complications that come from political figures attending the funerals. He says he always does what the family requests. Not sure exactly what happened with the mayor's office. They were not able to tell us what was the mix up or misunderstanding. OK, but the superintendent said it very well today. He it was did. about the West Coast family. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. We're going to move to some this positive. Again, I want to salute the mayor and the governor for adhering to the wishes of the mother and other family members, as well as sending their condolences. I want to say I honor you, I respect you, I salute the both of you. Mayor Brandon Johnson's administration, they relaunching <coughs> excuse me, a popular guaranteed income pilot. Uh, Amani, could you put that, that, uh, that article up for me? Yeah. Mayor Brandon Johnson's administration will launch a popular guaranteed income pilot that has provided $500 monthly payments to low-income residents as the city works to spend federal COVID-19 relief funding to avoid having to return it to the feds. They have to spend this money or they got to give it back. The relaunch was announced as part of the administration's plan to dedicate and spend more than $374 million in federal funds earmarked for community projects. The city, which has been slow to spend the money it received in 2021, has to, be, has to allocate all funds by the end of this year and spend it by 2026 or lose the money. Chicago officials hope to have the funds allocated by November. <coughs> Officials say they were doubling down on funding successful programs launched by the prior administration while pulling back on programs for which it's been difficult to spend money because they have been difficult to implement. The bulk of the dollars on the community initiative side will go out and have gone out under this mayor. And so it is really critical, important to him that we get this done correctly and that we return zero dollars to the United States Treasury. And so that's what the mayor's focus is, according to the city budget director, Annette Guzman. Thousands of families participated in the guarantee. No strings attached income program last year. Several participants told the Sun Times the program helped them cover unforeseen emergencies or pour them above water financially. But several said they wish it had lasted longer than one year. Demand drastically outweighed supply in the first round with more than 176,000 people applying for just 5,000 slots. Wow. 176,000 people applying for only 5,000 slots. 
I was almost just as rough as paying your last, paying your last two dollars on the lottery. Guzman said details on when the next round of payments will be available are being finalized. You know, something else that's very important, and I want to say this to my viewing audience, we hear a lot about what the mayor not doing. And when he show a tell what he is doing, for some reason, it don't be put out as much as people are saying what he's not doing. I know you're saying, Gator, what do you mean by that? All the attention was placed on the 70 million that the mayor put before the city council and the city council agreed that the 70 million should go towards the migrant situation. Because the mayor, the governor, and the county board president had agreed to come up with, I think, 270 or maybe 360 million or whatever it is to handle the migrant situation, all three levels of government with them putting together in a united force to make the federal government give more funds to deal with the migrant situation. I know that's a lot of money. But no one fully understood the importance and the significance of the money, which is one billion two hundred and fifty million that's happening with a bond that can help build businesses and help with other needs that the residents of the Chicago, that can address the concerns of the residents of Chicago. And the city council voted to make both of those things happen. I want to say hooray, hooray, hooray. There was some that didn't vote for it. It was right to their opinion for whatever the reason may have been. We've seen where the fraternal order police is siding with this other alt-right individual. I believe he's a part of the uh, Trump MAGA movement. You know, I'm basing that off of what I'm reading and the actions, his actions or their actions, to try to recall the mayor. And it amazes me that when Daly was here doing all the things he was doing, some of the things was right, some of the things was wrong. When Ron Emanuel was doing all the things that he did, including closing the 50 schools, I never heard anyone say, recall the mayor. So I just want to say, I'm glad the mayor is now doing his tour, going to various spots within the city of Chicago, there's 17 different communities, to tell the people what he's doing and what he has been doing as opposed to people saying what he ain't doing. And one thing I do know, whether you want to believe it or not, the young man, I can say he's a young man because he's younger than me. I think he might be 45 or something like that. He's not 50, that's for sure. And if he was, he'd still be younger than me. But I know that it's a young man that heard about her or Washington 
and heard his grandparents and his parents and his neighbors and his uncles and aunties and elder brothers and sisters tell him that, man, if only Earl Washington would have been the man, this is how this will be done, this is how this will be done. So you can see a young man that's hearing this and never thought that one day he would become the mayor because he was an activist for better education. And lo and behold, he heard all the story. He know all the mistakes. He know all the pitfalls. And when the campaign was happening last year, he saw how those that he was fighting for, that he was considering his community, was openly accepting the monies and everything else to go against Brandon Johnson to a Paul Vallis and they know that Paul Vallis was locked in to that MAGA movement and everything else. Yet the people that see Chicago, call them progressive, call them what you want them. They became that coalition that Harold Washington had put together when he won and when he won re-election, but he died. So you seeing the mayor standing up, meeting with the bears and owners and saying, hey, don't leave Chicago, let's try to make this work, because they're trying to make it work. And you seeing where individuals are now reaching out to the mayor and saying, hey, let's try to work together to try to make that Bill Chicago thing work for the betterment of all the residents in the city of Chicago. And one thing I do know and what you realize Win, lose, or draw. He's the mayor for everyone in the city of Chicago, including the ones that was against him. So I know he's strong. Got to be. In order to be a great mayor. Because one thing about Chicago Call it what you want. Everybody that was a mayor of the city of Chicago has some strengths and has some weaknesses. Now that Brandon understanding what was really on the fifth floor, we as a people didn't know that much about surplus money until Lori Lightfoot let us know that there was surplus money. Until Lori Lightfoot let us know that, wow, here's the reason the African American community wasn't getting the resources, because all the resources was on the fifth floor. So Rom and Daly and them made sure that we didn't know that they existed. So when you hear Brandon saying he pushed the deal for one billion two hundred and fifty million, a bond deal, and he let it be known that the TIF program that her and them had put together was to help the disenfranchised communities. So I'm saying for everyone that may not know what's happening. Listen to what everybody's saying. Be it good or bad, sit back and see for yourself. You can go online and find out all the initiatives that the mayor is doing to help make this city better. Don't take Gator's word for it. Use your smartphone and show your level 
of comprehension. Just by Googling, you go to the city uh, clerk's office and put in what has the mayor done to better the city with his executive orders, with willing to help the business community, be it a small business, be it a black business, be it a white business, be it African American business. Because one thing for sure, I'm of the opinion and belief that we as African Americans are the fairest minded people. Because we believe in inclusiveness. But it seems like when everyone else is in the position, they exclude us. When we see how those that's in the power, they want to make the decision to make sure that our children or grandchildren can have the books in school to read about America. And it ain't so much that they don't want us to know about it. I'm of the opinion and belief they don't want their children to know about it because their children is fair-minded as well. I believe racism, systemic racism, is a taught attitude. I don't believe individuals are born racist. And I want to say this. At the end of the day, come November 5th, vote for whom you want to vote for. But me, I'm voting against Trump. I'm paying attention to that trial that he's going through and seeing all the low down things that he has done. And now I understand why he kept screaming fake news because we finding out he was the greatest one with fake news when he used those tabloids to go against his enemies and to push himself. He was the king of fake news. So I want to say the students at the various campuses, you got a right to protest, but you must protest peacefully. It remind me how we all protest against the Vietnam War. I understand the Palestinians. I understand the Jewish community. Atrocities is what created the dilemma that we in now or that they're in now in Gaza. But when I saw on the news how they broke the windows at Columbia University, it reminded me of January 6th. How they went up there and they took down the United States flag and they put up the Palestinian flag. They made it where peaceful protest is becoming violent. Be peaceful, stay prayerful. Let's vote for a ceasefire. Let's vote for the release of the hostages. Let's vote for the end of the war over there. And let's keep America safe and peaceful. I want to say to God be the glory. That's gave the story.